Hey there, Sunny here again for another web development tutorial. Today, I'm going over the second part of CRUD, or basically updating and deleting from a server. If you're looking for part one, it can be found on our channel, and I highly recommend it before watching this one, because I'm going to be using the same program, just adding on to it. If you're looking for a complete working model of the code I'm writing today, a link to it can be found in the description below, but know that it is a little bit more complex than the one that we're making here. At any rate, let's jump into our code and get started again. When we're making something that will edit and delete things from our code, I think the first thing we should do is set up a system where we can make it so that when we click on a to-do, it tells the software some things about it. Why is this? Well, when we look at the actual CRUD CRUD site, you'll see that for making a request that will edit or delete, also called putting or deleting, we need to give the API the ID of the item we're deleting. This isn't like IDs in HTML where you can sort of just define them in the tags. These IDs are created and assigned when the items are created, and they're part of the JSON objects. Fortunately, there are ways for us to get them. When we use that list function from last time, keep in mind it returns a bunch of JSON objects. One part of those is their ID. So what's going to happen is we're going to have to do a little editing to our previously made functions. Firstly, to our fetching function, list, we add some code to give each list item, remember we call these LIs, a unique number associated to them. Because we have to iterate through a for loop when we're creating all of these anyway, we can just give each li a number equivalent to their index in the array. So for example, for the first to-do in the array, which has index 0, we say that the list item has an id equal to 0. We write this by saying li.dataset.id equals i. Keep in mind, these IDs that we just created are not the same, once again, as the IDs that we'll be using in our requests. I'll show you how to get those later. Okay, so now everything in our list has a unique number associated to it. The way I want to do this is that for all of these LIs, whenever you click them, the text that is written in them goes into the text field here, and then a delete button appears. This way, you can edit the text in the text box or choose to delete it. So, I'm going to add an event listener on click that will call a function I will name handle click. We'll make that in a second. Before we do that, I'm just going to make that delete button by going into our HTML document and making it. So, I'm going to make this button, give it an ID called delete, and then we're going to write hidden inside the tag so that when the page loads, it defaults to being invisible because we only want it to show up when the user clicks on some text. The actual button itself will have delete written on it. Back in our JS file, I'm going to make that handle click function now, and I'm going to pass in an event as a parameter. In this case, the event will be the clicking of a list element. So what we can do with this is say that a variable called selected that I will create at the top, var selected equals negative one, is equal to the id attribute we made earlier. So down here, I say selected equals the id of the event's target, because the event's target is the list element. So we do event.target.dataset.id. So just to make it clear, this selected variable is equal to the index of the to-do in the array of to-dos. I will also make it so that the value of our text input field is equal to the text value of the to-do. That would be to-do items selected.title. So quick recap. We made it so that every single to-do has a number associated with it, the same number as its index in the to-do array. We made it so that when you click one, its text is visible in the text field so the user can edit it. Now we just have to create the actual delete and edit functions. I'm going to start with edit because it's only going to require a small change to the save function we made in the last video. Basically, all I have to do is create a new branch inside of this function for if the to-do is already created and we're just editing it. We can do this by using our selected variable from before. Remember, selected is going to be an index in our to-do array, so it has to be equal to or greater than zero. If selected is that way, instead of making a post request, which would create, we make a put request, which will do updating. Now we will need the ID of the to-do in the API, and we can get that by doing to-do items selected dot underscore ID, and I'll make that equal to a variable called item ID. From there, we make almost the same request, but we add the item ID to the end of the URL and change our method to put. Then we want to make the item in the local array have the same text, so we just add a little one line to do that, and then we're all good. Our branch where it's not going to be a put request will just be the else condition to this. 
Now, all we have left is making delete. So we have that delete button and our selected variable. First, I want to create an event listener for the delete button at the top of our program. We get the element by its ID and then add an event listener for a function called delete item that we create now. The first line of delete item is going to get the item ID again the same way we did it before and then just make another request to the server, but now with no body and with the item ID at the end of the URL. This of course will use the delete method. We then make use of the splice function to delete it from the local array by inputting the index, which is selected, and then one, so it knows to just take that one out, and then I'm gonna have it call the list function to reprint the list without the thing we just erased. So now, that's everything. We now have a program that creates, reads, updates, and deletes from a server. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, another version of this code is found through a link in this description for you to explore. But that's going to be all for this video. If you liked it, consider liking. And if you loved it, consider subscribing. That's going to be all for today. Goodbye and thank you.